Music defines and enriches our lives, whether experienced as a recording or a live performance, whether it's downloaded or streamed, sampled, remixed or used within film or television. And the business of creating, protecting and promoting songs and musical compositions is the business of music publishing. Access now to music is quicker and easier than ever before, as throughout their history, music publishers have adapted by licensing music to a host of digital services. We are on the cusp of a, a huge technological revolution in terms of the online world. We've only started to see the beginnings of that. It's, it's a fantastically exciting opportunity. Now people can literally buy the song straight away. Technology has completely revolutionised the business. My own song, You Got The Love, has continued to evolve o over the last 20 years. I've made different versions, it's been used in TV commercials and of course famously, most recently, it's been covered by Florence and the Machine with huge international impact. There's nothing that can replace the uh, impact and drama of a performance or seeing a songwriter performing their piece live. I've just uh, done Ed Sheeran's album Plus. i um, been working with him for about five years now. It's um, the old fashioned getting the shivers, getting the buzz when you feel like a song's really communicating with you. Within the whole A&R process, the internet's definitely helped, but you look on YouTube, you can see straight away how many views they've had. You've already got an idea in terms of not just the music, but you've also got an idea of whether or not it's actually communicating to a bigger audience. We invest hundreds of millions of pounds on a yearly basis in the development of the careers of songwriters. Some of those songwriters will just write music, they'll write music for other people to perform, or in many cases, of course, they will do both. They will create their own music, and then they will perform that music and they will become stars. I suppose, ultimately, you're just listening for something which is a little different, a little bit special, that jumps out at you. I'm Jack. I'm Duncan. We started busking. Um, and then that led into, you know, playing gigs. We've been with The Margin for the last two albums. We signed to them after we were nominated for the Mercury Prize and they've been really cool and they've always been really sort of positive and encouraging and helpful. So the writer writes and composes and is creative and, and dreams and those dreams become a reality. And making them a reality is the job of a publisher. The publisher will invest time and money and creativity and passion. Get people to believe in the artist and want to be part of what they're doing. Hunt down income that hasn't otherwise been collected for the writer. The business infrastructure, commissioning a work, registering the work, and it involves promoting the work. We're also looking for opportunities to raise their profile. An enormous network worldwide. Let's talk about money and the song, OK? The composer's written his song, he delivers it to his publisher. The publisher may have actually sent it to radio. It could also be sold as sheet music. It may be released physically. A film production company likes the song. It also applies, of course, to television programming, to video games, to apps. What greater pleasure than to stand up on a stage? PRS is the Performing Rights Society and collects and pays royalties to its members when their composition is performed or played in public. Publishers will normally appoint MCPS, the Mechanical Copyright Protection Society, as their agent to administer the mechanical right. Synchronisation is essentially the use of any piece of music alongside a piece of visual media. So that can cover anything, film, television, advertising, computer games. We look at remixes, we look at samples, any way that we can get music out to the general consumer. 
anything on the internet is never a small thing. You know, we all know how quickly those things can become very big things. Because music can travel and be heard and performed, recorded, copied, it's not surprising that in a well-managed environment, hopefully overseen by publishers and their attendant collection societies, that there are many ways in which composers can generate income. The MPA is a broad church, and we cover every conceivable genre of musical work. Well, printed music is, is one of the oldest forms of exploiting music copyright, typically in, in pop music, but also uh, in classical music and, and in the educational area. It's normal for a, an album or a CD to be replicated in, in printed music format. That would involve transcribing the songs, typically for piano or for guitar, and then selling those books um, either through high streets or uh, online retailers. You hear production music every day without even realising it. You'll hear it in theme tunes, in adverts, in film trailers, in feature films, and even in ringtones. So a production music user signs up to the PRS, uh, the rate card is on their website, and there's an online licensing system, so it's very easy for production music users to find out how much it's going to cost for their production. The advantages of using production music are that it's easily clearable worldwide, instantly. The rates are predefined, so it's easy to budget. It's quick and easy to clear. It's written specifically for use with visuals, so it's easily editable. Music users can try it before they buy it, so there's no risk involved. Composers write all sorts of music and so the work that they can create can range from a single individual work for piano through to a chamber piece, a string quartet, a large ensemble work, orchestral works, ballets, operas and as a publisher we're here to support and nurture them. We spend a huge amount of time and energy and resource in providing editorial services for our composers. In an orchestra, you've got maybe 80 musicians on stage and you've got 20 or 30 different instruments. So from the score that the composer provides, the publisher then creates the individual parts for the musicians to play from. We are gripping the extraordinary opportunities, the extraordinary platform that the internet gives us. I'm a huge fan of streaming sites such as Spotify, which I think are the future. Why fill your hard drive up with thousands of megabytes of data when you could be streaming them? You want to promote a track, you've got two million followers, you're suddenly like, here's my track, it's out next week. It's suddenly instant. The state of the art for sheet music now is, is for download um, straight to an iPad. Um, and it's not difficult to see tablet-based sheet music being a dominant force uh, you know, within the next business generation. We are now putting up onto our website, free of charge, scores of all new works so that anyone is free to go onto the site and download them. The people can decide whether they like it, thumbs up or not, literally. We probably couldn't make the music that we made at the moment if it wasn't for the internet. The technology allows us to collect income on behalf of our composers from the most obscure places. There'll be changes in the way people consume their music, but essentially I think it'll always come down to a great song sung by a great singer. We simply don't know what, what wonderful works are going to be written. There seems to be a constant supply you know, of new music and you know the UK creator base and the UK publishers seem to be at the forefront of that. Publishers are now more necessary than they've ever been before. The internet is a phenomenon, social networking is a phenomenon, but it is so large it needs people to coach, mentor, direct, guide, account to, manage, and music publishers are absolutely where it should be.